Hello, welcome to today's podcast about our Surgical Coordinator Spotlight Series. My name is Rebecca Brigel. I'm the CEO and founder of Surgimate, and I'm joined today with by Cami and Nicole from Summit Orthopedic Specialists. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. The pleasure. This is our first time having two people um, in one session, so very excited to have you both. Um, Cami, please introduce yourself. Tell us about who you are. Hi, um, I've actually worked with uh, Summit Orthopedics for about 10 years, uh, starting at the front desk. Um, I am now a surgery coordinator. Um, I've kind of explored my way through various departments in the office, um, starting with referrals, patient access, um, so answering phones. Uh, scheduling regular appointments. I've done some finance, um, you know, doing out-of-pocket estimates for procedures in office and out of office. And then finally uh, started with surgery about five years ago. Surgery stuck and I am now the supervisor of the surgery department. Wow. Um, and and I'm you- your- I'm the director of administration here at Summit. I've been here for the past five years and I have a huge passion for performance improvement. So my focus is helping departments establish and achieve their goals through a performance management system where we solve problems and we continuously improve our processes, which led me to our surgery team with Cami. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. So do you focus mainly on surgery or do you work in other areas of the business as well? Yeah, so um, I I started with surgery, but I also work with billing, clinic, uh, and patient access too. Nice. And um, so tell me, what part, what aspect of surgical coordination, Cami, um, do you love the most and what do you find the most difficult? Uh, the, the thing I like the most about surgery scheduling um, is really just helping the patients, making the process as smooth as possible for them um, from start to finish. Um, and of course, you know, the team aspect, uh, working with my team, overseeing everything, making sure that the operations run smoothly on a daily basis. Um, things that are, that are difficult, um, challenges that we have, um, you know, having to cancel, reschedule surgeries due to Various things, um, you know, people not being cleared uh, for surgery or authorizations not being approved for the surgery. So having to kind of work those around and having to move patients up, fill those spots, keep the the schedules filled. That's probably the biggest challenge. Yeah, definitely. I always say, you know, surgical coordination is unlike other kinds of coordination because you can't just, it's not like a restaurant reservation. You can't just slot someone else in. You know, they need to know days in advance, they have to stop their meds, they have to have all the other paperwork in place. So it's kind of like a huge juggling act. Exactly. Yeah. Um, And what do you find? Do you have a good story for us about, not without sharing any PHI, of course, but, you know, a good story, a good surgical coordination story? Um, Not a particular story about a particular patient. Um, however, uh, we were in a very difficult position in, as the surgery department a few years back. Um, Nicole and I got the opportunity to kind of revamp the whole department, um, build a more solid foundation and leadership for that department. Um, our utilization was down to probably about 60% a few years ago consistently, um, with our facilities requiring about 70 to 75% utilization. Um, and with the use of Surgimate, we have been able to actually up our utilization to consistently 80 plus percent on a monthly basis now. Oh, wow. So when you talk about utilization, you're referring to block time. Correct. Oh, nice. Yeah, we were at a point where they were, our facilities were actually getting ready to start taking block time away from us. And then when we started with Surgimate and getting the department reorganized, it actually has helped us, um, you know, keep those surgeries scheduled and continue to keep our block time. And actually our facilities have started reaching out to us um, to ask us to add more block time now. Oh, nice. So they've developed more confidence in your business because you're able to schedule you know, more um, intentionally and, you know, with higher success rates. That's amazing. Yes. Congratulations. 
Thank you. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> Without focusing on Serge, you made too much though. Um, did you have you ever kind of noticed that there's no formal recognition for surgical coordinators? Nicole, maybe I'll take it over to you. Like, what do you kind of think of that? Yeah, I I did notice that. Um, I think for our team, it was really important to highlight our performance and to start tracking it and sharing it with the team. So, you know, we win as a team, we lose as a team. Um, everyone knows, you know, whether where we are on a daily basis um, and when we do reach our goals and we can celebrate together. So um, here at our practice, we definitely recognize our teammates for that. Oh, that's so wonderful. So you kind of built in a, a system of, you know, rewarding or recognizing um, the contribution that the surgical coordinators have to, you know, the success of the practice. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I always say there about, um, some people say there are less, but I say there are about 50 people involved in each surgery, you know, from varying degrees. You know, can one person could just be, you know, giving you the sticker when you go for a clearing test and, so that all the way to the other end of the surgeon who actually performs the surgery. You know, but there's one person who's keeping holding all of that together. Um, and that's the surgical coordinator, making sure that everything's done, the clearances, the auth, just as you mentioned before, Cami. And I always say there's about a hundred tasks involved in each case. Um, and if you're booking like 50 cases a month, that's 5,000 tasks. Quite a bit. <laughs> There's a lot that goes into each surgery, definitely. Yeah. I mean, do you, do, you, do you think that's right? Do you think there are 100, about 100 small tasks involved in each case? I mean, from start to finish, I would I would say so, yes, like you said, from various aspects of, of, the, of the whole experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a – and that's – I you know, when we talk about metrics, we say often – 25% of cases get cancelled or rescheduled. And in my mind, when you think about everything that has to be done, I think that's a miracle that <laughs> only 25% of them have to be cancelled or rescheduled. And that's really because surgical coordinators, I find, have amazing executive function. Um, can you share, you know, I know that you have great executive function um, just because we're talking today and you're in this role. Do you, do you want to share any other areas of your life where that's really helpful? Yeah, actually, I can say um, problem solving. I've I've kind of um, advanced my skill in problem solving. I would say over the last few years, especially as becoming a leader, um, and I I have kind of taken that into my personal life and my personal relationships, um, and been able to kind of utilize my my new problem solving skills to kind of work through issues in my personal relationships too. Same. I think in my personal life, it's really helped me prioritize what's important and, you know, what needs attention first um, or, you know, what can wait. So that way I have a little bit more balance too. Yeah. Like the laundry can always wait. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> to avoid. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That's my philosophy. No. Um, so do you either of you have kind of a, a particular story about um, a patient, of course, without sharing any PHI or some kind of surgical coordination incident that you want to share with me today? So I don't know if we have a particular patient, but a lot of the times uh, we do have urgent surgeries that come up um, from, you know, uh, irrigation and debridement where a patient needs to go in and get an infection cleared out right away, but we don't have the block time available within the time frame the surgeon is requesting that to be scheduled. So then we kind of have to work together as a team and with the facilities to kind of uh, problem solve that and find a spot for them to go and kind of work around the doctor's clinic schedule as well. So we have to work with basically almost the whole office staff um, to figure out where to schedule this patient in a time frame that is, you know, healthy for the patient and what the surgeon wants as well. Mm. Yeah, there's nothing like, and they, they always happen at like four o'clock just as you're walking out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was also, my first job, I was a surgical coordinator, my uncle, and um, 
he always loved doing the add-on at the end of the day. It was always my favourite. <laughs> my father actually worked what was his practice manager in Australia. Doctors kind of usually worked solo, at least back in the 90s. Now it's a little different. But um, it would always be like a fight would erupt when my dad would be like, you can't add on any more cases for that duckling. It's full. Think about it. <laughs> So, yeah, and the, the patient sitting outside were like, what's going on there? You know, I was like, it's two brothers. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and um, I think, you know, kind of as we as we wrap up, do you have any um, thoughts or feelings about how surgical coordination is going to change in the years coming? Um, maybe as you, you identified, it's kind of changed, you know, surgery mates changed the way you've done it, I guess, in the last few years. Um, do you have any any thoughts on, on what's coming next? Um, hopefully just more efficiency and, and transparency within, you know, scheduling um, between the facilities and the offices. Um, I, I feel like a lot of the programs are, you know, quite advanced and very user-friendly. Um, so hopefully that just continues and improves as time goes on. Agreed. I think that that will continue to see technology advance when we have tools like Surgimate that helps us communicate um, between the facilities, the reps, um, to our patients and our EH, EH, EHR systems. Um, it, it just helps us organize and manage our surgery orders a lot better. Agreed. Very nice. And if, um, if, if there was one thing you could tell the world that was the hardest part of surgical coordination what would it be i'm gonna stick with determination um just keeping uh, keeping going rolling with the punches and just sticking with it when things you know when you're faced with obstacles and things become a little bit more difficult than you expect great i'm gonna say uh learning from your mistakes and not being afraid of them having that culture with your team that you can trust each other and have a safe environment so you can focus on continuing your processes together. Right. And that's applicable to any job, you know, in yeah. healthcare, in, you know, restaurant management. I mean, it doesn't really matter what it is that you're doing, right? When you right. can align with your team and, and set goals and fix your processes. Um, that's, a, that's a really wonderful thing. Um, so, in surgical coordinators, we're building this um, kind of awareness around Surgical Coordinators Recognition Day for all the wonderful work that surgical coordinators throughout the US do um, on, you know, every single day, um, including weekends. You know, it all, it's always happening. And so at Surgery Mate, we just kind of want to thank you for the time and investment and love that you've given the patients over the years. and. We hope that they can that the patients you know, and the surgeons and other colleagues continue to recognise you for all the amazing um, caring work that you do. Um, so thank you very much. Thanks for meeting with me today. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for having us. It's a pleasure.